Hello and welcome to the Slingshot Channel. This episode is all about safety on board of an airplane. Specifically, how dangerous are objects that you can still legally bring into the cabin? Well, let me explain the background. For some time now, it is very, very complicated to bring anything bladed on board of an airplane. But there are still exceptions, like, of course, stuff that they give you, you know, to uh, eat the onboard meals. But there are also stuff that the TSA specifically allows, like, like this one here. To make this very clear, this isn't an instructional video how to do dangerous illegal acts on board of an airplane. So I'm not going to show you any techniques, how to hurt someone with these or something. I just want to find out, are these dangerous in the hands of an attacker? Um, and therefore, I believe I just want to test if uh, the authorities are just only giving us a false feeling of security or if uh, this is really an effective countermeasurement against uh, terrorism. And here we have the things that we want to test today, like a plastic knife, a butter knife with a rounded tip, exactly in conformity to the TSA rules, a fork that uh, KLM, I understand, gives out to its first class passengers, and of course a normal ball pen and a pencil, all perfectly okay on board of an airplane. And of course, as a test device, ballistic gelatin. <laughs> but Remember, ballistic gelatin is really not a very good um, device to test an attack against the human body because there is no skin. So this means that it's just like a, a you know, piece of meat, of beef or pork, ready for the oven. This means that it's very easy to poke into it. What's missing is skin and we found a very good simulation for that too. It is this leather that is used to clean cars and as you see, it is real leather. Uh, cut a piece of it off already so you can see how thick it is. Very, very, very thick skin. Also sturdy. I mean, it's also not possible to poke a hole through this with your fingers. I believe that this is probably a little bit more tough than uh, human skin because it's probably pig skin. And in order to apply it so it really clings to the tissue just like real skin, we simply got to heat up the surface of the gelatin block so it melts and gets all sticky, and then we'll apply it. So let's go for it. Okay, to calibrate it, we will now first use this rounded dowel, so it's a little bit rounded, but not too much, because this one can usually not penetrate human skin. Let's see if I can punch it into this here. <coughs> now, as you see, that would have hurt, certainly, but it did not by any means get into the block, because the skin protects it. Now, we will start with cutting tests. See, this plastic knife is a little bit serrated. Let me see if the camera focuses. See, this plastic knife is a little bit serrated so that someone can eat a piece of beef, I think, or pork. <laughs> Usually they serve it with pasta. <laughs> In any case, and this butter knife here, very, very blunt. Let's see if it can cut into the block, just like if you would attack a, a human trying to slice the throat or something. Okay, we go for it first. Hold it like this, try to cut in. No, it doesn't work. It would definitely hurt. Let's see what happens when we do this with the butter knife. Same, same thing. That would definitely be like slightly bleeding scratches, but no danger really. Okay, what we will now try is to step with this thing. Just like, you know, someone threatens you to step with this thing into your throat. And first we'll do this with pressure and then we'll do it with force. So first pressure. No. No. It doesn't work. <coughs> no, I'm hurting myself more than the block. So against pressure, although this does look painful, it didn't penetrate. 
Now this is not a big surprise because as you see the tip is blunted. But what if someone simply breaks off a piece so it's getting sharper? Let's try that. Okay, this looks a lot more mean now. Ah. Now we will go for some vicious power stabbing. Just like you would grab someone and stab him repeatedly. Let's try if that would actually penetrate the body. Nope. This one. <laughs> Doesn't work. Okay, we have established that a rounded butter knife, just like the TSA says, is a pretty much harmless object. Even though, of course, if used against the eye, it could still be very dangerous. But then again, just your thumb would be dangerous enough. And, and plastic knives are actually dangerous if someone decides to break them off and uses the sharp tip, because then you could easily hurt someone with it, I guess. Wouldn't be very hard. Okay, the next object we're gonna test is this fork. Let's see what happens when we stab the fork into our test device, because it is designed to actually, you know, pick up some piece of a steak. Pressure test first. <coughs> it's ridiculously easy. Now, of course, uh, the TSA could say, thank you, Jörg, for this uh, wonderful demonstration. We're gonna ban all forks and all plastic knives from the cabin, but that wouldn't solve the problem because now we're gonna test two things that you cannot possibly uh, you know, ban from, from cabins. Just a normal pencil and a normal ballpoint pen. This really isn't something that is considered a fighting pen. It's just an off-the-shelf, normal, cheap pen. And I even hurt myself a little bit from the stabbing. <laughs> mm. Okay, we'll try to stab it in. I use a fresh spot on the leather here. <coughs> and with the pen, it's probably even easier. So now I guess a lot of you guys will say, oh, thanks for showing us this, but it's still so, so like, isn't this advice for terrorists? It is not, because it's obvious to everyone that you can really hurt someone with a pencil or something, and certainly with a fork. I mean, it's kind of common knowledge that you can hurt someone when you poke a fork into him. Now, what is my point exactly? My point is that I think that in order to really make flights more safe, Airlines need to get back to the old sky marshal concept. I think only someone who can be trusted and who has uh, arms with him that are much superior to this will give us a certain find a kind of safety. I think not having sky marshals or security people on board makes flying a lot more dangerous. And I think this is just giving us a false feeling of safety. Therefore, I encourage all airlines to go back to that concept instead of telling people you're safe because nobody can hurt you on board of, a, of an airplane. Because, as you've just seen, that is perfectly possible. So I hope you like this because that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye. <laughs>